Hi, everybody. Jim Cipriani here to improve your life through employment. With me is Ken Goodman. Say hi, Ken. Ken's an uh, agile coach, an expert at helping companies become agile and helping their project delivery. He's working right now at Wegmans, helping them become more agile. Agile, agile, agile. We seem to hear it all over. I don't even know sometimes what the difference between agile and scrum is, but I wonder, Ken, if you could just summarize it for us. Yeah, a short summary of what it is, is really it's a mindset shift, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, a different way of thinking, which then opens you up to trying different processes and frameworks like Scrum, just one of many different uh, you know, types of processes and frameworks that fall under the overall uh, Agile umbrella. If you really wanna know what it means to be Agile, go to agilemanifesto.org, read about the four values and the 12 principles. They happen to be written for the software business over 20 years ago, but they really do apply to just about anything that you deliver from products to services and not just software. Well, how does it differ from uh, delivery methods of the past? Well, you know, you know, for soft for software, uh, we'll start there. You know, the old waterfall method, where there were very distinct phases, and you basically handed off large chunks of uh, you know software, typically trying to hand off the whole product from phase to phase. And by the time you got to the end, where really you validate what it is you built, sometimes it's too late, and it's not the right thing. An agile approach, which is where the the frameworks and the processes underneath the agile umbrella come come into play, is that they afford you the ability to more quickly pivot and not or not make those mistakes, avoid them, end up delivering what the uh, stakeholders want sooner uh, with a higher degree of quality and expectation. Makes sense. Thanks. So, is um, agile methodologies? Uh, are they just to be used in software development or are they used in other phases of business? And if so, where are they most popular? I mean, if you asked that question five or 10 years ago, the answer might have been yes. But today you're seeing them applied to DevOps, uh, marketing, um, you know, financial controls and, uh, you know, anywhere that's, uh, you know, you can see it popping up and being applied outside of like the traditional uh, technology space. Okay. And you're mentioning uh, the benefits that it's doing, but if, I, if I'm a leader, why is it that I'm gonna encourage uh, agile methodologies in my organization? Well, I mean, for starters, it's a, it's, a, it's a mindset change and a culture change that empowers people to be more open, honest, uh, you know, not being afraid to fail and trying new things to get better. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of the, uh, you know, management under a microscope out of play to allow you know, higher levels in, uh, you know, the organization, particularly the executive uh, level to really focus on strategy and what's coming next for the business and not so much are the low level operations, you know, working well, right? And if we trust everybody to do what it is that we want to do and accomplish the goals we want to accomplish, it allows everybody to focus their efforts and energies where they're going to produce the greatest value for the organization. I got you. So um, if you could, you've worked with companies large and small, implementing agile methodologies. Can you maybe summarize for us what you've seen the companies who are doing it well do different from the companies who aren't doing it so well are doing? Yeah, absolutely. The, the companies that are going to be most successful are the ones that basically learn about what it is and what it's not, which we touched on briefly, and then really implement it from the top down, right? Organizations that tend to struggle or fail are those who have an agile adoption that radiates from the grassroots, the bottom up, or, you know, from the middle, and then tries to fight that two front battle, both down the org chart and up it. So, you know, starting off with a top down approach is definitely key. Uh, you know, once you make that decision, the biggest thing that you can do to be successful is to understand that it's not just a decision, right? It's not just the transformation. It's the decision plus the journey, right? Uh, you know, being agile isn't a destination down the line, you know, in your, in your business's timeline, right? It is a continuous, never-ending journey, right? It's con continuous improvement, uh, always, you know, being better tomorrow than you are today, and always having that mindset where you're open, honest, you trust each other, and that you're free to fail in a responsible way. So, uh, you know, you do all those things, you're going to be successful. If you fall off that journey, you know, if you have regressions and don't course correct, you're ultimately going to fail. Where have those places been that you've seen the organizations fail? I hear a lot of organizations call themselves agile-like or partially agile, and I'm sure you've seen companies fall off the tracks, waste time and money on this. So if you could help the listeners understand uh, the pitfalls to avoid, what are those things that you've seen? 
Well, the biggest pitfall is thinking that just because you've done a transformation or that you know agilely things that you're agile. That's not always true. Uh, you know, a good place to be is saying, oh yeah, we're kind of agile or we're agile light and you know it and you know that you could be better, right? Um, the worst place to be is believing that you're agile when you're truly not, where you don't support the uh, values and principles behind being agile, where you don't have that honesty, that trust, uh, where you're not always doing the right things, uh, you know, for your people or the business. So, and, and these are things that you can see in large organizations and small. Uh, it's, there really is no, um, there, there's no formula for who's gonna be successful and who's not, other than you do it and you stay on that journey or you do it and then you don't. Makes sense. And if you had to recommend a resource or the, the least expensive, easiest way besides the manifesto that one of the listeners could go and learn more about agile methodologies, where would you go? Well, I mean, the most valuable asset to anybody is really, you know, our network, right? Human beings. Um, I would start there. Like if you're looking to, you know, investigate it, learn what it's about, start talking to people, right? I mean, you can, I mean, you can go out and search the web, but that can be a daunting task, right? Not knowing what to look for. And the reality is there are hundreds, maybe thousands of opinions on all different aspects of what it means to be agile. And then worse yet, all the, the processes, frameworks and sub processes to all of those, it can really be uh, confusing. So I'd reach out through your network, through the people that are already in your organization. I'd reach out to professional services companies like, you know, systems personnel, because they always, you know, are very much uh, better network than any particular individual. And then, you know, if you are going to use the web, there's a whole alliance dedicated to, you know, agility, and you could go look for that. So those are just some of the places, uh, you know, to look and just keep your options open. Don't focus too much on one person, one organization, one consultant, one contracting company, you know, really have an open mind about it, do your homework, do your research, and, uh, you know, have that dialogue to pick what solution or what pathway is going to be best for you and your organization. What, what is the membership cost for this alliance and how does somebody get there? Well, the Agile Alliance right now um, is, you know, running a special. It's 50 bucks for the year and it is going to be the best 50 bucks any individual or organization for their, uh, you know, um, team members can possibly spend. I think normally the membership's one or 200 bucks and I gladly pay that every year because the value you get out of that from the keynote speeches that are recorded to all the content underneath and the discussions and the, the, the people in the network that you have access to. It's, it's agilealliance.org. Yeah. All right. Ken Goodman, thank you very much. We're going to continue this discussion going on Slack. Let's stay agile. Thanks, Jim. All right, take care.